What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Jazz Piano School podcast. This is going to be episode number 159. And this episode is going to be about self assessing your playing and using jazz tools, specific jazz tools, to break down other people's playing and learn how to use those tools to make consistent progress for the rest of your career. So, there's not going to be much, very, very specific demonstrations in this video. It's going to be more an overall picture about how to improve, how to use a plan to improve, and exactly what we teach in Jazz Piano School as well. My philosophies about teaching and how to help others. So I'm all about teaching people how to fish. I never want to just give you the fish, right? Because it really doesn't do much good. It just gratifies your uh, desire for a couple moments, a day maybe. But in the long run, it's hurting you more than it's helping you. And that's what I'm all about here. So in this particular episode, I'm going to be talking about how small categories that we've developed in jazz piano school, like solo piano, voicings, rhythm, harmony, right? There's different levels and progressions to learn in all these different types of categories. And you have to self-assess, right? You can use our chart by going to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash podcast 159, wow, excuse me, podcast 159, I'm getting in my head of myself, to self-assess, right, you're playing and understand exactly where you are. Now, once you've done that, it's about moving through the different progressions to improve those certain categories, right? If you've ever played any sort of video games or things like that, you have different skill levels and categories, right? And I'm getting into my my nerd self here, right? But if you have a skill level in using a blade, for example, right, when battling, or using potions, or uh, you know, using crafting tools, right? You have different skill sets. It's the same with jazz piano, right? Maybe you're not a gamer, so you don't know what I'm talking about. But in jazz piano school, excuse me, in jazz piano, there are so many different categories, right? So you could have amazing knowledge about voicings and harmony, but you don't know how to put all of it together. Your repertoire is terrible, or you may know how to play in a group really well, you may have great improvisational skills, but your voicings and your solo piano is lacking, right? So we need to find a way to improve all those categories, and one of those ways to do that consistently is by breaking down each category and really reviewing all the different sets of tools in each of those categories. So. That was a long-winded intro, but I had to kind of give you some, uh, set the groundwork for what I'm gonna be showing you, otherwise it wouldn't have made any sense to you, all right? So with that being said, let's dive right into this episode. All right, welcome to the Jazz Piano School Podcast. This is gonna be episode number 159. I'm your host as always, Brendan Lowe, and thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for your support. I'm excited to be here. I got a great episode for you today, and it's not gonna be on specific jazz piano topics or Um, I should say details of playing jazz piano, but it's going to give you more of an overall picture of the direction that I'm moving in with my education. And I kind of want to give you a, uh, just like an overview or like a, I don't really know what you call it, but um, just kind of set you up for the lesson, right? So basically, you know, I've, I've always kind of toyed with uh, the way to lead students in jazz piano school. And I've, I've always had my philosophies and obviously, you know, I like, I love providing structure and direction and things like that. And I'm always looking for a better way to give jazz piano students tools and have them apply those tools. I'm all about teaching people on how to fish rather than giving them the fish, right? I want you guys to be able to use these tools to express freedom uh, within your playing. I don't want to have you copying me. I don't want to give you transcriptions. Um, But obviously there are times for that. So what I'm trying to talk about, what I'm going to be talking about today is when are those times and what does that look like? What does it look like in the big picture to implement licks um, and to study someone else's playing? And based on where you are in your assessment of your playing, when are you going to get there or how can you use those skills? Because a lot, there's just so much information, right? There's so much information in jazz piano and how do you put the pieces together? And that's my goal with jazz piano school. And I think I've done a great job already um, with uh, the the site and everything like that and the member content, but there's always more that can be, um, that can, you can always get better. You can always get better. I will always be trying to improve jazz at jazz piano school in the, the content that we have with inside jazz piano school. So my new thing is that uh, jazz piano has tools, right? There's tools in jazz piano and I'm teaching everyone tools. I want to teach you a tool. So for example, um, 
you know, a, a tritone substitution is a theory tool, right? Doing this, uh, going into this, I forgot we're even in the lesson. This is still the demonstration. I'm not actually even giving you the lesson just yet, but that's a tool, right? Just, and when you hear that from another player based on what they're doing, you can spot that tool like, oh, you know, that's a tritone sub, right? So when you've learned that tool, you know how to use that tool, you can use it in your playing wherever you want in any change in any tune, right? I want to teach you how to build the house. And so everything I'm doing now in jazz piano school is geared towards that. And so there's going to be levels for different categories, right? So in jazz piano, there's only a certain number of categories. You have voicings, you have solo piano, you have harmonic um, knowledge, right? Or harmonic theory knowledge, right? You have rhythm, you have improv, you have comping, and that can, that could fall under the category of something else, but you have comping, you have repertoire, and you have reharm. And so I'm not going to go into all the categories, but those are just some sample categories, right? And uh, if you go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash podcast 159, you can get all of the categories. And what I want you to do with those categories is that I want you to use the assessment on the page and rate yourself in those categories, right? And there's going to be some, uh, some examples in the categories that you can use. For example, in the voicings, if you know your rootless voicings, then you are at a certain level. If you know your drop two voicings, right? then you are at a certain level. Uh, if you know your drop two voicings with extensions uh, isolated, then you are at a certain level, right? If you are able to play any voicing in uh, both hands in a two-handed arrangement with any type of extension on the spot that I can give you, if I told you to play a G7 sharp 11 flat 13 natural nine voicing, right? If you can voice that out, in seconds within two hands, then you are at a certain level, right? So there's levels, there's levels for every single category. And we can go through those levels for each category, solo piano, voicings, so on and so forth for all the categories I just listed. And depending upon what category you're in, what level that you're in, there's a lot of stuff, uh, levels that needs to be worked on prior to the level that you're on if you need to fill gaps or in order to progress you need to keep going but everything can be structured and that's what we're going to be adding into jazz piano school is these certain progressions so you know exactly that you're making progress in the voicings category for example or the solo piano category for example or the repertoire category right so what i'm trying to get at here is that when you're learning these specific tools you are building a big picture. Now, obviously you don't wanna just learn tools, you need to know how to implement them into tunes and that's where our main curriculum comes in is that we're combining all of the tools uh, in a systematic step-by-step -step process which actually combine the tools. In the sep this other section, I'm gonna change kind of the lab into this all these um, levels for the different categories, you're working on specific elements or specific tools like learning how to use a hammer. But in the main course curriculum, you're putting all the tools together to actually develop a finished product in a tune. And that's how I'm going to start to create this difference between um, working on the tools and then working with them all together. But anyway, my main point <laughs> that I'm trying to get at is that you want to assess yourself. So if you don't, if you don't know drop two voicings, for example, uh, you need to find out what you do know and you need to find out where your holes are, right? So with all this being said, I'm going to give you some examples about using tools because when you get to a certain level, you need to be able to spot those tools and know how to use them, right? I still, to this day, when I listen to um, pianist play, I just heard Benny Green play, you know, he's he's using certain types of tools, right, in his playing. And I and when I watch YouTube videos, I'm, I'm looking for all these little tiny uh, isolated tools that these people are using to combine to get this finished product. And when you can start to recognize them and understand the tools that they're using, it's very, very easy, in fact, to learn jazz piano and start to implement those tools into your own playing. Because honestly, there's a certain level and progression to every single category in jazz piano. And again, go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash podcast 159 to get that assessment. So you can use that and kind of understand where you are. And again, this is just an example. We're going to go much deeper into this assessment um, if you are a member of Jazz Piano School. Uh, but this is going to kind of g give you a sense of where we're at, give you a sense of where you are at uh, with your own assessment. So I know that was a long-winded intro, but with that being said, I'm going to dive into the lesson. Excuse me. And I'm going to give you guys some examples. I'm going to play through a tune and give you guys some examples of... Uh, what exactly I'm talking about. Okay, so let's go to the uh, let's go to the lesson. 
All right, so just like I said, all these different types of tools can be used in any sort of tune, right? So if I'm, let's say I'm playing Misty, right? Let's say the first thing I do is I play the melody and then I go to this, right? This diminished chord. That in itself is a tool, okay? So that is a tool, like this is a one diminished reharm. And essentially this is kind of a delayed resolution going into the one major seven, right? And again, if I'm, let's say I'm comping or I'm playing the melody, what if I do this? Right, to harmonize the melody. Now a lot of different things are happening there, right? So essentially all these different tools are leading into a sound, right? You know, and, and as I use these tools, it's combining to make a sound. But if I just played that for you, you'd be like, I have no idea how to do this. I can't do this, but you can. And these are the examples. This is why it's so important to assess yourself and look for tools in people's playing. And again, when you start to isolate the tools, you can see what's going on. So like I said, I used a one diminished here going into a reharm. Or excuse me, going into a one chord. Now, when you isolate that tool and you know how to use it over all the keys in any key, you can do it whenever you want and you can create the exact sound that I just created. Now, do jazz giants, jazz piano giants, um, Keith Jarrett, Oscar Peterson, Herbie, Chick, all these other guys, um, Bud Powell, do they use this? Absolutely. And when you hear them do it, you're like, oh my God, it sounds so great. But it's really just an isolated process of a certain tool that they're using, right? And then here, this is just a diminished chord, right? Half step below diminished leading into any minor chord. Now the theory behind this, the tool behind that is that into any chord, we can use a diminished uh, voicing leading into that chord. So if I'm playing a C minor seven, I can play a B diminished into my C minor seven. If I'm playing an F minor seven, I can play a E diminished into my F minor seven. Now, clearly, I'm not voicing it in root position. So what voicings am I using? Now, the uh, it's a combined tool sequence here, right, that I'm using. So I'm using com two combined tools. I'm using a drop two voicing with my reharm tool. So there's actually two tools in effect right now that are being combined, right? I'm using a drop two voicing with my reharm, moving into another drop two to harmonize the melody. Now, I'm just picking these uh, voicings and harmonies because it works with the melody so well. Now here, all I did, right, was I went from, I can still use my drop two here. I went up to my minor major, slid back down to my uh, regular minor seven. And again, I'm harmonizing with a drop two here. I have my root in my left hand. Again, there's a couple different tools being used here. So one of the tools that we teach is a solo piano setup. Okay, and what I mean by that is that I have one and seven here in my left hand and I have three here. So already I'm using a tool from the solo piano system, the solo piano approach that we take. It's a specific tool. It's a two-handed setup. All right, that's one of the tools. The second tool I'm using is a reharm. So essentially I'm moving from my minor seven to my minor major and then back down. It's just a simple side slip, basically going to your minor major, resolving back into your minor and then finally resolving into my dominant. But the way it sounds, the atmosphere it creates, you'd be like, oh my God, you'd hear all these different movements and you'd be like, wow, this sounds amazing. And it does sound amazing. That's why I play them. But when I break it down for you by tool, by the tool, the thought process and the tool behind it, you can use this in your own playing whenever you want, right? Now the third tool I have going on here, again, like I stated before, is the drop two. So these are all drop two voicings. I just have my left hand doing the uh, doing the movements of the melody, right? Or, excuse me, of the voice leading, okay? So that's just an example, right? So that's it. this is an example of playing a melody. Now again, you need to know your goals, right? If you're working on solo piano, this is going to be great for you. But if you're working on your group playing, those tools probably wouldn't um, <clears throat> come into play because you're you're not. Uh, I mean, they could definitely they could, but just just know. I'm, I think the point I'm trying to make is that group playing and solo piano playing is completely different. If I'm in a group, right? Um, 
right? I'm playing my left hand voicings here and then my melody. So however it is, you know, if I want to harmonize it here, I mean, absolutely. You can do the same things I just played in a, in a group setting, but I'm just saying solo piano is completely different, right? So if you want to work on your group playing, or if you're listening to group players play like in a trio, you need to understand like the, the tools that you're using. Now, this is a tool, right? Right. This is this is how I might be improvising. So basically one of the tools I'm using here is more of like the Errol Garner comping style approach. Right. Where I'm just kind of pulsating the chords. And the other thing I'm using is more of an octave style improv uh, in my right hand. And again, with some slides with chord tones. Right. So the the other thing and again, I'm rolling. I'm rolling with chord tones in the middle. So these are tools, right? These are tools being used. So I got one tool over here, the Errol Garner uh, style comping and then octaves. I could certainly just play my solo without that and still use one of the tools. I could just use single notes. Now, again, even when I play single notes, there are still tools in effect being used. And one of the tools, right? was trills. You heard a lot of trills. You also heard slides. Now, in order to get a specific texture that you are looking for, in order to understand the reason that maybe your sound is not coming out like the albums, like the pros that you hear, the reason you're you're not able to recreate those amazing jazz sounds comes down to really finite details like I'm showing you. So if I just go... That is much different than me going... You hear the difference, right? One has, uh, one is more a bland style, just single notes. The other has textures. It has character. It has flavor. You need to be aware of that. And if I just take out my Errol Garner, let's say I just play one chord and I go, that's, that's just completely bland. I'm just holding this chord down, right? And nothing's happening over here. I don't have any rhythm. I don't have any, um, pulse, right? And again, when I start to add in the, the Errol Garner, right? With the trill at the end, instead of just going, it completely changes the texture. So those are all tools, right? And the same, I can continue on in the improv style. If I just go to, Uh, if I'm just comping this way with shells, it's going to sound a certain way. That's a certain tool. Just comping with shells using my tense structure is a certain uh, style as well, right? Especially with movements in the middle, right? So the purpose behind this is to really kind of get your focus thinking about the tools that you're using. You want to go through, and again, like I said in the video, uh, or excuse me, the um, the, the pre-intro to this, the... Um, there's not much playing, specific playing going on, but the demonstrations I'm giving you, I really want you to focus on how, what the tools are that you're using in your playing, right? So this is actually exactly what I'm trying to teach you uh, in jazz piano school is I'm trying to teach you all these elements in these tools that go into your playing. Now, when you get to a specific level, obviously there's many, many tools and, and there's different levels for each category and different tools for each category. But at a certain point, you can listen to a player like I was listening to Emmett Cohen uh, and he was actually playing Misty and he was using certain tools that I love too. And I'm like, oh, okay, like that's, I, I'm, I'm watching how he combines tools and at the same time, you know, watching him solo I mean, this was a nice uh, thing he was doing. He was using the Errol Garner stuff, right? Um, um, with this more of a lower end texture, but I'm paying attention to the textures that he's using. And for all pros, for that matter, that I listen to in order for me to learn from them, I'm paying attention to the textures and tools that you're use that they're using. And once you break it down, it's very, very easy to see exactly what they're doing, okay? So like I said, there wasn't much really specific detail, but this is more about demonstrating that in any tune, right, there's different tools. Now, even that, like a lot of you may say, oh, I could never play that. Um, or what was he doing there, right? 
Now this, again, uh, is it more of a, this is a solo piano setup or a two hand voicing setup where I have one and seven, three, okay? Now I had 13 and nine on the top. Now from here, I slid my extensions down, which is a movement of extension tool, right into a drop two. And again, I'm using more of a drop two sound here. Drop two sus, which is a reharm tool with a voicing tool. And then a uh, resolution into the dominant. Again, another reharm tool with an extension, right? I didn't do that, but I could have. This is another tool, right? That's another tool. That's a specific tool. And again, I've worked on all of these individual tools. I'm not just trying, and again, like this is my point here. If I transcribed that for you and you just played this, and you just played that, you wouldn't know any of the components that are going into this, right? So in jazz piano school, I'm teaching everybody to how to fish. I'm teaching people how to fish. I'm not giving you the fish, right? I want you to learn freedom. I don't want you just to copy my freedom, right? And so uh, we teach, I've practiced, and all the students in jazz piano school practice all of these different tools separately. Right, so if that's the tool right there, well, well clearly we, you can break it down more because this is a drop two voicing, right? You would practice this voicing, right, in all keys. So that's C, right, F, B flat, that's one of the tools you would practice. Then you'd practice this setup here. This is a one, seven, three setup, one, seven, three. Right, you need to practice that in all keys, right? And then you start to combine the tools. You would practice this reharm, understanding the importance of a sus reharm, right, with a resolution. And again, I'm using a drop two style uh, voicing here. But again, what's happening here is a, a sus with a resolution. So you'd practice your sus resolution in all keys. I would go G minor, sus, resolution, one. I practice that in the key of F, then I go to key of B flat. C minor, sus, resolution, one. Okay, so I'm practicing that theory tool of the sus to the resolution. And then in combination with that, right, I'm using a movement of my natural nine to my flat nine while I resolve. That's another tool I'd practice. So I'd practice the movement, extension movement practice is what we call it in jazz piano school. Um, moving your extensions over one chord, over the dominant chord, right? This is just a nice harmonic tool where we're harmonizing in thirds with our drop twos, right? Very, very beautiful. Just a really nice thing. Now here, right, is just a drop, again, a drop two with a diatonic passing movement, okay? Here's my, here's my, all right, so you break it down further. Here's your diatonic passing movement you'd practice. There's two ways to do it. If we do it root position, we go one, two, three, two, one. Now, obviously, that's not what I played. I played one, two, sharp two diminish into my three, or you can have one over three as well. Sorry, root position. Right, you hear how the difference in color changes when I use the one over the three instead of the three minor. So that's the diatonic passing, okay, passing chord uh, movement or series or tool that we call it in jazz piano school. And again, when we combine that with another tool, it's like using a hammer and a saw together. You gotta hammer some stuff and you gotta saw some stuff. And sometimes you gotta alternate back and forth or use them in combination. So now I'm using a drop two tool combined for my voicing combined with my diatonic passing chord reharm. Right? You see that? So again, it's all about learning the tools. Now, if you're going through YouTube videos or you're, you're trying to play transcriptions and learn jazz like out of books and stuff, and I mean, books are fantastic, but you have to know the progressions of every category, right? So all voicings, just your voicings have categories or levels that we're gonna start building in jazz piano school, right? Uh, the first thing is you need to know your triads. You need to know all your major and minor triads. Now there's gonna be a lot more, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna rush through this. You need to know your seventh chords, right? You need to know uh, your rootless voicings, isolated rootless voicings for every type of chord.
right? Right hand, left hand, all that good stuff, okay? You need to hold uh, your left hand rootless voicings as well, right? So from there, then we can start to learn your drop twos. You can use, learn your drop twos for every single voicing, right? No matter what, what, where you are, that's why I'm able to do all these drop two voicings here, right? That's another progression, okay? And then you need to know your drop two voicings with your root in the bass, which is a little bit more, is a little bit easier actually than just playing your drop two voicings alone, right? For all your major, your minor, your dominant, all your minor chords, all your minor flat five chords, right? All your alter chords. Every single type of chord. And again, these are all progressions, guys. You can't skip any of these levels. You can't skip any of these steps because it leads to holes in your playing. And that's why people don't become complete players. That's why they don't reach the pro level of, of really elegant, detailed uh, playing and, and execution like really detailed because there's holes in these different, because you learn a drop two voicing here or there, then you can only play it in that key and you only understand the importance of it like in this one spot, right? You don't know how to shift it. <clears throat> you don't know how to change it. You don't know how to alter it all to express your own freedom. You only know it in that one thing. Whereas if you'd gone through all these levels, you practice in all these different types of ways, you would have complete control over this tool. It's like only being able to use a hammer uh, to, to, to nail a nail. Like a hammer has so many different purposes, but you only learned how to to nail one specific type of nail into one type of wall. You know, you, you don't know how to use the nail to, excuse me, the hammer to put up trim or take nails out or, or use it to like kind of make a hole in the wall or other, you know, there's so many ways to use it, but you only know that one way. Right, so all these different tools in combination with each other uh, lead to different things. Especially this this holds true for all improv things: our bebop approach notes, our bebop scales, right? Um, playing improv over our reharms, right? You know, whatever whatever reharm. You know, it, it, depending upon what I'm doing for the for the improv, right? I had so many different I had different tools working in my improv there. You know, I had I was playing over a reharm. I played over an altered scale, <laughs> and then I had that the the relative two minor to the to the tritone there. But um, you know that that my improv has tools in it as well, right? So due to the tools that I've practiced and combined. That allows me to create a specific improv sound that can sound like certain people, okay? So this was kind of a longer episode, but I really wanted to demonstrate the importance of structure and direction and kind of what, how you can really take advantage of tools and tool learning by assessing your, your skill level and finding out where your holes are and what you need to learn because there's levels for everything, you know, for all the different categories that we've created here in Jazz Piano School, soul piano, uh, rhythm, harmony, uh, voicings, and all those different things. Again, you can go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash podcast 159 to get that assessment list, excuse me, and do your own assessment. But Hope you guys enjoyed that. Definitely look for those tools in pros playing when you go hear a concert, when you, um, you know, uh, when you uh, watch videos and stuff like that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, I'll talk to you in the next episode. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that kind of overall picture about learning jazz, about my philosophies, about Jazz Piano School's uh, educational process. If you have any more questions, please leave them down in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We release a new podcast every single Wednesday, a new Lick of the Week every single Monday. And don't forget to go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash podcast 159 to get your uh, assessment of all the different categories. Um, and go to jazzpianoschool.com and check out our other free education. So that being said, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. And as always, happy practicing.